Thank you. I now recognize myself for questions. And I want to start with some overarching questions regarding your office and your procedures. I, I have a number of, of questions. Uh, uh, you can uh, just yes or no I will suffice. Uh, but during the 118th Congress, have there been any discussions, written or verbal, about not responding to congressional oversight? Congressman, we have been responsive to congressional At, Just uh, yes or no. Have there been discussions, written or verbal, about not responding to congressional oversight? I know what we've received from you, but so have there been discussions? In there that? have been discussions on how to respond and how to meet the priorities of the subcommittee. Have there been any discussions about providing only previously public documents? Did there have been discuss? conversations about how to respond to the committee in an effective manner and what we can do to be... Well, obviously, you're not going to answer my question specifically and let that be seen for the record uh, that you're really not answering. I, I, I hope you've had conversations. I really do. We've but I'm asking specifically, have there been any discussions about providing only previously public documents? There have been conversations about how to be responsive to... Previously public documents. Congressman, it's about what documents... Thank you. I'm, I'm going to move on because clearly you are not going to answer the question. Have there been any discussions about delaying production to run out the clock of this Congress? Congressman, we continue to produce documents every 10 days on average. Still not answering my question. Thank you. I want to run through a few of our letters and attempts to get a better understanding of your process in action. And let me explain something to you. I consider this the most important thing I've done in my now 12th year in Congress. 1.2 million American people died. The process of our government is very, very important. I will tell you that Dr. Fauci, when he came in for his transcribed interview, gave us some information about the process concerning grants, for example. It was very revealing, and I appreciate his openness and honesty in that, because we are going to recommend a better process for the next time. That's how important this is. So if you don't want to answer my questions about process, that's fine, but I'm going to continue to ask them. And the record will show that you're not answering. But let's, let's go to this. On February 13, 2023, we sent the department our first letter regarding COVID-19's origins. We then sent follow-ups in October and November. When did the department first identify responsive custodians? Congressman, we produced a first set of documents to your request in February within two weeks. When did the department first identify responsive custodians? Congressman, we produced documents okay. responsive to your request within two weeks. Okay. I'm sure I'll get this next, same answer on my next question. When did the department first conduct custodial interviews? Congressman, we produced documents that have been ongoing and responsive to your request. Okay. Thus far, in 12 months, the department has produced about 10,000 pages of which a significant portion are simply unresponsive to the question, previously publicly available, just news articles. Is this the entirety of responsive documents in the department's possession? Congressman, we have worked to continue to produce, as you noted, producing documents even within the past 24 hours to make sure we are being responsive. And we continue to look for, to work with your staff to prioritize documents to make sure we are being responsive to the priorities of the subcommittee. Pursuant to the subcommittee's letter, how many potentially responsive documents has the department identified? Congressman, we continue to produce documents in a timely manner and, as you noted, being mindful of the taxpayer and making sure we are producing documents based on the priorities you effectively and efficiently. Okay, well, how about this, this, doctor? Would you like to take that question for the record and get back to us? Congressman, I'm happy to take that question. Back. Okay, let me repeat it. Pursuant to the subcommittee's letter, how many potentially responsive documents has the department identified? Congressman, I do not have that number in front of me. I'm happy to continue okay. this conversation. Then maybe the next one can be for the record. Let's just go down this rather than you say giving us the same answer uh, that doesn't answer the question. How many have gone through review? Congressman, I do not have that. You want to take that for the record? Congressman, I'm happy to continue to answer Thank your question. Would you take that for the record, yes or no? Congressman, if it is at, submitted as a question for the record, we are it will be. be responsive. Do you commit to produce every responsive document in the department's possession? 
Congressman, what I commit to you is to continue to work with the department, to work with the staff's priorities, and to continue to do productions as long as the committee is. So you don't commit to produce every responsive document in the department's possession? Because that's not an answer. Congressman, I commit to continue to work with you to make sure that we are producing documents based on the priorities of the committee, of the subcommittee, and that we will continue to produce documents and continue to have those conversations. But you don't guarantee that every responsive document in your possession will be produced. Huh? Thank you. No, you've, you've answered it. You can say it over and over again. The record's going to reflect your answer. That's fine. On March 10, 2023, we sent the FDA a letter regarding the approval of the Pfizer COVID vaccine. To date, we've received only 274 pages. Is this the entirety of responsive documents in the department's possession? Congressman, as you noted, we did produce documents, and we are happy if that is a priority for the subcommittee to go back and continue to work with your committee to, to respond to that request. So there may be more documents that you could produce? Congressman, with the limited resources that we have and being mindful of the taxpayer dollars and the priorities of the subcommittee, yeah. we can come back and you know, reevaluate the priorities. Well, so pursuant to that letter from March 10, 2023, how many potentially responsive documents has the department identified? And maybe you'd like to take that one for the record as Congress, well. I, Congressman, I'm happy to take that back. Okay. And how many have gone through review? I would imagine that would have to be uh, something for, that you'll, you'll get back and to us on. And I'm here to speak about our responsiveness across the department consistent with my role. And I'm I here to, to ask you that. about process and where you are in the process. If you can't answer it, that's fine. If you have to take it for the record, then please do so. But you should be able to do that because it should be documented, filed, et cetera. Do you commit to produce every responsive document in the department's possession? Congressman, what I can commit to you is to produce documents based on the prioritization. And I do want to set the record straight that some of the requests that we got were incredibly broad and included search terms such as lab, nature, teleconference. If you think about the breadth and depth of an organization that has 90,000 employees, that is boiling the ocean. So that is why we work with your staff to prioritize and understand. Doctor, we limited, we limited it to 12 employees. So, uh, so that, that makes a huge difference from what you were just telling the American people. So, and, and, I, and you should know that. And I think you do know that. On October 13, 2023, we issued a subpoena to the department after it failed to produce requested documents relating to Dr. David Morin's potentially illegal deposition, disposition, excuse me, illegal disposition of federal records and evasion of transparency laws. You sent a letter in response. In your letter, you state that the release of documents pertaining to this internal investigation would jeopardize the department's in investigation. What is the current status of the department's investigation, Dr. Morins? Congressman, I cannot speak to internal investigations and timelines, but I'm happy to get back to you with them. Who, who can speak to the internal investigation? Congressman, we internal and per, you know, personnel investigations or investigations are not something I can speak to in this forum. Who can? Congressman, I'm happy to get back to you. Please do, because we're conducting an investigation as well. And we override your investigation. Does Congress have the authority to investigate potential federal records violations? Congressman, con Congress has the right to investigate and oversee federal law. Yeah, thank you. You just answered my next question. Congress has jurisdiction um, over this. Can you produce the department policy that says you are unable to produce these records while there's an internal investigation? Congressman, I can take that back and see what materials will be responsive thank to the request. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. A final topic I want to ask about is uh, regarding the department's authorization memos prior to transcribed interviews. Uh, when, did, when did this practice begin that, that the department had to authorize? Congressman, it is a longstanding practice of the department to, going back multiple administrations, to provide authorization memos to current and former employees reflecting the conversations and accommodation process between the committee and the department. Do you approve each memo? I review and sign each memo. Thank you. 
Uh, prior to issuance, does the so subcommittee have the opportunity to agree with the memo? Congressman, the memos reflect <coughs> the communications between the committee and the department, and the authorization memos reflect the accommodation and serve as guidance, and that is why they are shared with both the employee as well as with the committee. Okay, the screen shows the memo prior to the interview with Dr. Morins. In it, you instruct Dr. Morins not to provide any information regarding his official work at NIAID. Uh, you signed this memo. Did you personally approve it? Congressman, anything coming out with my signature reflects the department's position, and I read everything I sign. According to Section 7211 of Title V of the U.S. Code, the rights of employees individually or collectively to petition Congress or a member of Congress or to furnish information to either House of Congress or to a committee or member thereof may not be interfered with or denied. Are the instructions in these memos advisory or are they mandatory for the witness to follow? Congressman, these memos reflect the guidance based on the scope that is and between that is agreed to between the subcommittee or committee and the department. So they are advisory, reflecting the conversations so that the employee understands the conversations that happened between the department and the committee regarding the scope of the conversation. Well, I would tell you that regardless, it seems the department council treats these memos as mandatory. And I think there is an argument to be made that even by issuing them, the department is intimidating witnesses and interfering with their testimony in violation of the law. And I hope this practice, regardless of administration, no matter which administration, no matter which party, I hope that that comes to an end. I now recognize Ranking Member Dr. Reese from California for questions. <clears throat> 